A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses, and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. A river runs through the middle of the town. The river has large boats and small boats on it. There's a bridge across the river so that the cars and buses and lorries can get to the buildings on the other side. The cars and buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary, Mungo, and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games and toys and picture books. Mary's always very busy. She's always got something she wants to do. At the moment she's seeing how high she can build her bricks. Mungo is helping her. Mungo is a wise old dog, so old and wise he can usually help Mary with whatever she's doing. Today he's pushing the bricks over to her. He's got a very good flat nose, just made for pushing bricks. And where's Midge? There's a picture of him on the wall, but he's always very difficult to find because he's so small and he runs from place to place very quickly. He's very inquisitive. That means he's always trying to find out things. Can you see him? I can't. He's not on the table and he's not on the chair. He's not in the toy cupboard. There he is, in that lorry. Midge is very fond of music. He's even learned to play his own tune on the flute. Listen. And now he's gone again. Mary's still building. Please, can I have some more bricks, Mungo? I've pushed so many, my nose is sore. You want a crane, not a dog, to help you. What's a crane? A crane is for picking up very heavy things from one place and putting them down in another. All big building sites use cranes. They're building a new block of flats over there. I've just been watching. Then there must be a crane there. So Mary and Mungo went over to the window, and the first thing they saw was a crane. I knew it, I knew it, I knew there would be a crane. Where a big building is being built, there's always a crane. Look, there's something moving along the top. Something moving along the boom, you mean? Cranes have booms. And now there's something going down. Oh, I wish I could get closer. All right, Midge. I'll take you down to the building site. I'll stay here and watch. Mind you behave yourself, Midge. Mungo and Midge like going down in the lift. They have a special way of doing it. Goodbye, boys. Be good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Now then, Midge, we must always remember to make sure the lift door is shut. And then Mungo had a surprise. Midge wasn't there anymore. He was in such a hurry, he wasn't going to wait for Mungo. He ran straight out to the building site. The building site was full of strange things. Machines for pushing earth away and machines for mixing up cement and sand to make concrete. But at last, Midge found himself right underneath the crane. My goodness, it looks even bigger and taller and more enormous than I thought. Then, as Midge watched, the boom at the top started to move round. The big wooden tray hanging underneath it was full of bricks. The tray moved up and along and down onto the building so that the builders could build it even higher. Midge was very interested and very excited. Then he saw the empty tray coming back and down. And this time Midge was so excited that he hardly noticed that the tray was coming down right on top of him. Midge knew that he must run. So he ran till he was in a safe place and he could watch the big wooden tray coming down to the ground. Then Midge watched the builders fixing a big girder to the crane. A girder is made of steel and it's used for making buildings stronger. And he watched another empty tray coming down. At last, a hooter hooted, and the crane stopped. The crane driver climbed out of the cabin of the crane. Midge climbed onto the top of a bucket and watched the crane driver and the other builders having a cup of tea. I thought the hooter would never go. It really has been a long morning. I could do with this cup of tea. It's thirsty work driving a crane. Yes, and it's thirsty work tying up the loads, ready for the crane to lift them. Midge could think as fast as he could run, which was quite fast. He thought to himself, While they're having their tea, I'll pop up and have a look at the crane driver's cabin. After all, if he drives the crane from there, it must be very interesting. So Midge ran along as fast as he could and set off up the crane. It was a long way up. And it looked a very long way down. But he got there in the end. In fact, if you look carefully, you can just see him running up into the driver's cabin. And inside the cabin were switches and levers and buttons and levers and switches. The builders were too busy drinking their tea to notice Midge. They didn't notice Mungo either. All this time, Mungo had been looking for Midge. saw the machine for pushing earth away and he saw the machine for mixing concrete but he couldn't see Midge anywhere because Midge was high up in the crane driver's cabin and Midge was very excited and very interested. Mungo sat down to get his breath back. He didn't know it but he was sitting on the wooden tray which was fixed to the crane and suddenly Midge started the crane working. Poor Mungo, he got a very nasty surprise. 
Then Midge looked out of the window of the cabin. He saw Mungo on the tray in the air and thought, Oh, help! I must get Mungo down to the ground before the builders think he's something to be built into the building. But the builders had seen what was happening. Who's that working my crane? There's a dog going up and down on it. I'll soon stop that. But Midge was already trying to get Mungo back to the ground again. That's not right, Midge. Try pushing it. Yes, that's better. At last, Midge pushed the right lever the right way, and the crane took Mungo safely down to the ground again. By this time, the crane driver was nearly back in his cabin. He didn't see Midge coming down. workman made a fuss of Mungo. Poor dog, you must have been frightened. But Mungo wasn't frightened any more. He was very cross because he saw Midge running away from the crane and he thought, it's that mouse's fault. I'll chase him home. Midge got back to the block of flats first. Mungo was close behind him. Midge ran up the stairs. Mungo took the lift. They met on the landing. Why are you both so out of breath? And Mungo, whatever were you doing going up and down on the crane? It was Midge's fault. Ask Midge. I... I wanted to find out how to make a crane work. Uh, only I wasn't very good at making it do the right things at the right time. That's because you're only a mouse. Your head is too small to know about such things. Now, now, boys. Well, I do know what a crane does. It's got a long arm boom. It's got a long boom and it picks things up and carries them across and puts them down. Yes, a crane picks things up and puts them down. You'd better stay in your lorry for a while to keep you out of trouble. That's a good idea and I'll help Mary with her building. Thank you. 